evening, everyone. I'll call to order the committee as a whole for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. I'll let the record show that all aldermen are present. Uh, first on our agenda, we have PL 94-22 by Mayor Gilio to authorize the transfer of $944 from our general fund contingency to line item 5110.412 for the costs associated with cleanup week. Uh, so based on, uh, unfortunately the mayor's not here tonight, but uh, based on the feedback, uh, it was a very successful cleanup week. Um, and based on the number of tickets that we had been able, that we, we were able to sell, uh, and then also the fact that there was no rain uh, when it occurred, so there was nothing sogging everything up and uh, causing our the weight to um, go up. It came in a lot less than expected, so the city own uh, contribution portion is only $944. Um, so typically that's it's well over $1,000 that, that we have to kick in for that. So all in all, um, it's um, better than expected. So any comments or questions on this? Something we do every year. All right, um, can I entertain a motion please? Motion. All right, and motion is made by uh, Alderman McCall and seconded by Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And uh, that is referred to tonight's regular meeting for resolution. Uh, next up, we have PL 96-22 by Mayor Elio to authorize the creation of capital fund number 224 for Hornets uh, Park Project. Uh, so that kind of coincides with the, the next PL uh, that's coming up. Uh, and it's capital fund. Uh, right now, there is no money going into it, but hopefully uh, we start to accumulate some money uh, to make improvements over at Hornets Park. Uh, anything else to add to this? This is just more of, of just setting the, the, the fund up, right, Gary? Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, any comments or questions on this? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion. All right, motion is made by Alderman Panis. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Alderman McCall. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, the motion carried, and that is referred to tonight's uh, regular meeting uh, for resolution as well. And next up, we've got PL 97-22 by Mayor Elio to authorize the mayor to sign and submit an application to Cataracts County for ARPA funds in the amount of $400,000 for lighting upgrades and installation at Fornis Park. Uh, if you recall, a previous resolution uh, was passed based on estimates for around like $349,000 for lighting upgrades. And um, I believe Carrie can, can give us a, a better idea. Everyone should have received the actual quotes that uh, they went out and received, and it was uh, more to the tune of four four hundred thousand dollars to uh, provide lighting on those fields. Um, so I'll turn it over to Carrie. Um, that's exactly correct. So I had uh, created a draft application and was working with uh, Peggy Roof, uh, the Cataracts County official, and submitted the estimating to her. Um, we didn't put it for the legislature for a vote um, due to how the ARPA funds come in. They actually made quotes um, and actual um, figures. So I worked with uh, Dave King, the city electrician, to make that happen. And with an increase of uh, goods, uh, we actually made 400000 as opposed to the 350 that was previously presented. OK. Any comments or questions from the council on this? Alderwoman uh, Witt. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, um, if nobody realized, uh, Field 8 isn't here, but it's because of the electric lines, right? I remember we were told that one time that they couldn't put the lights on 8. Um, yeah, if I recall correctly, if you, it's because of, it, isn't it the high voltage power lines running yeah. behind of it? And it would be the proximity with the poles. So you can't have lights on that field due to the proximity of the active. Have we, all in the past? Is this, I can't remember if we've actually got a contractor set yet for this or is it still in just design? Um, it would be City Forces doing it in house. Okay. Um, it was for materials. And then if there are any um, contractors that would be necessary, um, besides working in partnership with National Grid, and I do believe there was an electrical union that was going to be helping uh, contribute some time to the project. If there is anything that's necessary, um, DPW would work to do the proper procurement process. Um, 
it may be for, um, I don't know if it would be flight work or, um, but for now there's some money allocated in the estimating, or I'm sorry, in, with the quotes that allows for um, fill and various materials. If our forces can't do that in-house, I believe um, the DPW director would um, be amenable to. Any other comments or questions? All the room in the call? When I, I think we talked about Hornets and the need to make some upgrades there. I mean, one of the things that I've had people ask me about is, well, why are you doing this or why don't you use the ARPA funds for that? And I think that part of what people don't understand in our community is exactly what we can use ARPA funds for and what we can't. And so they're, because of, I think they think sometimes that maybe that's not the, the best use of things, thinking that we could put it towards salaries or different things and not really realizing that those monies cannot be utilized for that. So I don't know if there's some way to kind of put a, either a document together, kind of saying, you know, here's what we um, look to use our ARPA funds for, because we have talked about it, or here's what we are, and, and, and some of the things that it can't be, because I think the, that many residents are under the assumption we can use it for many things that we are unable to. Okay, yeah, fair point. Anything else? Um, I, I guess I would just make uh, the statement that, you know, I think we're doing a bang up job uh, upgrading our parks. We've made that a priority, um, certainly over the last, I would say, five or six years. Um, and I fully welcome any funding that comes from, uh, from Cat County uh, for the, the use of our parks. With that being said, um, I'm, I guess I, I would have preferred to see $400,000 go towards something that would create a new demand, uh, something that the city doesn't currently have. Um, and, you know, all our parks need those upgrades, but whether it's a skate park, whether it's a teen center, whether it's a, a, a expand a fishing pond and, and, and have fishing derbies, I, I don't know. Um, I guess I, I feel like that uh, this money could have gone towards something to create a whole new avenue of, of creating uh, marketability for, for our city. Now, with that being said, I, I support this. I hope the county, I welcome the, the money uh, from the county. Um, again, they want to invest in the land. I'm, I'll happy, happily accept it. And as we move forward, based on a conversation we had a while ago, hopefully the grand scheme of uh, the, the, uh, what would be the master plan for Fornes Park comes back with, with some really unique um, tenants. Um, and, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope this creates like major tournaments and, and just makes the, the number of adults and adolescents that participate in, in baseball and softball explode in all the end. Um, and I, I hope that's the case. All the call. Speaking of opportunities for it, I, I do have to say, you know, I've had the opportunity to go down to, you know, one of the things they had, which did go into starting to be more towards where they need lights and stuff, is that there was a, uh, a benefit there for, um, I'm going to probably get it wrong, but it was childhood cardiac issues and stuff. So, you know, I think that, that those are opportunities that perhaps our residents can take advantage of. You know, because now our season is shorter too. Like I was driving home last night, I'm like, it's seven o'clock getting dark. You know, so I think, you know, marketing it towards some of those things that benefit in a different way to our community. If I could just interrupt. So um, one of the things I did work with the county on was brainstorming to see if there was something that we could use it for our reviews. However, there is because of how the uh, county's ARPA funds came in, they claimed the revenue loss category. So I had to actually prove that it would be them providing uh, and continuing a government service that they do now, which they do at our rec center, I'm sorry, where they're using recreation bureau because of where those kids go during their summer program and the other programs that are held there on those fields. Otherwise, I couldn't do a new service or a new program because how the revenue loss category is for them to follow their guidance in procurement and funding of projects with how their ARPA funds were. So um, I, I did try. So, so just in layman's terms for me, so they're, they're only able to spend ARPA funds on existing programs, is that? 
Um, they they did the, the county did their ARPA funds under the revenue loss category. So I had to prove in order to get county funds that you have to use their funds on a government service that they would normally provide. Mm -hmm. And they are providing that service currently to the city and they they actually provide us, I believe it's like fifteen thousand dollars annually. Towards youth services? Yeah, I have a memorandum from Chris um, Schwery explaining what it is they exactly provide mm -hmm. so I can make the connection with this project. Okay. So right. that helps. For, for some of, for, uh, because we have youth programs at the park. Correct. At that specifically. And he outlined exactly what they do. Okay. Us. And it, if we can integrate doing some sort of youth services uh, and programs at night to take advantage of the lights, that would that would be great too. I would imagine most of those programs end um, in the daytime. If they could do, yeah, it would be awesome if we could start doing some evening programs and I don't know, like I don't know, laying uh, paper bags and letting them go up in the air. I, I don't know, right? Like just something to take advantage of the our, our fields and our youth our facilities then at nighttime. Um, so thank you for that update, sure. Sherry. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, anything else? No. Uh, Alder woman. Wait. Yes, um, no, just a couple weeks ago, um, Sandra pointed out they had uh, a benefit down there. They had a benefit in, in softball tournament for hospice also, and they utilized the parks and it was at night. So <coughs> there's a lot of things going on there besides just the softball and, and baseball and Little League. And also there are fishing tournaments, uh, derbies that have grown over the years. And I think we should be promoting more of that. And that's, like you had pointed out, I think those are things we just need to come up with. So I agree. But we also have to park, uh, fix the parking lots. Agreed. Okay. Anything else? All right. I'll entertain a motion. I'll motion. All right. Motion is made by all the women. Second. Second by all the fans. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And is referred to tonight's regular meeting for a resolution. Um, So second. Second by Alderman Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. And I'll call the order for regular meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. Will the clerk please call the attendance roll? Alderman Witt? Here. Alderman Tannis? Here. Alderman Gonzalez? Here. Alderman Paul? Here. Alderman Robinson? Here. Alderman Anastasia? Here. President Crawford. Here, please rise for the invocation and the pledge. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of this community. In your name, we pray. Amen. Correcting and approval of the minutes of the previous regular meeting. The regular meeting of the Olean Common Council was held on Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022, at 7 p.m. Present were Alderman Crawford, Witt, Panis, Gonzalez, McCall, Anastasia, and Robinson. None were absent. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous regular meeting. Could I get a second, please? Second. Second by Alderman Anastasia. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Committee reports and unfinished council business. No. Communications from the mayor. Special proclamation for Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. <coughs> Whereas Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month draws attention to one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths in American women. Whereas Ovarian Cancer often has no symptoms, and when symptoms appear, they tend to be associated with other conditions. Whereas screening is difficult, in fact, at this point in time, no reliable screening or early detection tests exist for ovarian cancer, whereas survival rates increase significantly with early detection. Therefore, in recognition that increased awareness is a very important tool in fighting against ovarian cancer, I, William J. Alio, Mayor of the City of Olean, 
on behalf of the Common Council do hereby proclaim September as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Olean. Furthermore, I recommend that Olean residents be aware of the symptoms associated with ovarian cancer. In testimony thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the seal of the City of Olean, the 13th day of September, 2022, for the City of Olean, New York, signed William J. Paleo, Mayor. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, I would like to uh, welcome Mrs. Ann Sorokas to uh, approach the Common Council at this time to receive the proclamation. Thank you so much, and thanks for teaching me religion back in the day. <laughs> so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Special proclamation for Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Whereas Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia, a general term for memory loss and other cognitive abilities serious enough to interfere with daily life, whereas Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging, although the risk factor increases with age, there are approximately 200,000 Americans under the age of 65 who have been diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's disease. Whereas Alzheimer's is a progressive disease that worsens over time, currently there are treatments for symptoms, but no cure for the disease. Whereas a group of residents organized a music festival hosted by Woodside Tavern of the Range on August 27, 2022. Proceeds benefited the American Alzheimer's Association and drew awareness to the disease. Therefore, in recognition of families who live with the effects of Alzheimer's disease and those who support them by raising awareness and funds for the Alzheimer's Association of Western New York. I, William J. Elio, Mayor of the City of Olean, on behalf of the Common Council, do hereby proclaim September 2022 as Alzheimer's Awareness Month in the City of Olean. In testimony thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and 
caused to be affixed the seal of the city of Olean, the 13th day of September, 2022, for the city of Olean, New York, signed William J. Aleo, Mayor. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Clerk. Um, our guest is not here tonight to receive this proclamation, um, but I wanted to uh, reference in regards to um, Alzheimer's uh, awareness and, and everyone, um, probably most everyone has a family member that's been affected by this uh, horrible disease. Um, I came across an interesting study in regards to um, the onset of dementia. Uh, in a recent study, uh, people between the ages of 40 and 79 who took 10,000 steps per day were 50% less likely to, to develop uh, dementia and early onset of Alzheimer's uh, within a seven year period, according to that study. Uh, and so, uh, as we continue to try to make Olean more walkable, um, those who uh, were able to take a, a walk at over 40 steps a minute uh, with, to walk with purpose were able to cut the risk of uh, dementia by 57%. Um, so I just wanted to share that with, uh, with the council. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clerk. All right, uh, miscellaneous communications? None. City official reports? None. Do we have monthly report of the city auditor amended August 2022? All right, how about proposed legislation and referrals? Got a long list here for you. PL number 93-22 by President Crawford, referred to the regular meeting Tuesday, September 13th, 2022 for resolution by council president. PL number 94-22 by Mayor Alio, Referred to Committee of the Whole, Tuesday, September 13th, by Council President. PL 95-22, by Alderman Anastasia. Referred to Regular Meeting, Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, for resolution by Council President. PL number 96-22, by Mayor Alio. Referred to Committee of the Whole, Tuesday, September 13th, 2022, by Council President. PL number 97-22 by Mayor Alio, referred to Committee of the Whole Tuesday, September 13, 2022, by Council President. PL number 98-22 by Mayor Alio, referred to Committee of the Whole Tuesday, September 27, 2022, by Council President. PL number 99-22 by Mayor Alio, <coughs> referred to Committee of the Whole Tuesday, September 27, 2022, by Council President. PL number 100-22, by Alderman Witt, referred to regular meeting Tuesday, September 27, 2022, for resolution by Council President. PL number 101-22, by Alderman Witt, referred to regular meeting Tuesday, September 13, 2022, for a resolution by Council President. Okay, <clears throat> before I open it up uh, for public comment, I would like to give you an opportunity to any of the aldermen to make a statement at this time. Alderman Whip. Thank you, Alderman Crawford. Um, I just want to thank Mr. Rufus for decorating our neighborhood. <laughs> you did a great job, and I think, um, you know, it's amazing. You, you just assume people know about ovarian cancer, childhood cancer. And I had several people ask me what the ribbons were for. So it gave me an opportunity to educate people. So thank you for doing a great job of decorating all the way down to the hospital and all the way back up. So it looks great. Um, the other thing I just wanted to share with the council, um, we all know about what happened at JCC last week with the gentleman with the taser. And I had a young girl that actually lives in my ward. And she just wanted me to thank our police department for being there and just making them feel safe, even though I don't think they ultimately caught the person. But I just wanted to share that with us. Thank you. <laughs> Any other uh, older woman? Oh. So I'm not, uh, I've had a, a J, uh, Alderman Panis had brought this up about tents in the backyard. I believe right you sent out the email on so I've had the same thing with one of my residents on um, South 2nd, just expressing concerns about having people that are not his uh, uh, leases, if you will, um, setting up shop and, and actually having a tent. And it sounds like some illicit 
um, drug activity in the back. And so I guess I'm just, I guess I would ask that if there's anyone in my ward that, that they've had similar issues, because if, if we've had a few, a couple, I'm guessing it's not isolated incidents, we have issues with homelessness in the city and, and we know that and we need to look to see what, what um, where we need to partner with agencies, because like you said, Alderman Pence, you don't want somebody who's down on their luck to be out, but how do we help rectify that and prevent that? And particularly with the resident in my area that there was some drug activity and how do we, um, you know, how do we support landlords who are willing and interested in making Olean um, a healthier, better place to live? And along with that is, you know, looking to see which houses we have that you know might otherwise be knocked down and stuff that you know we might be able to rehab through partnering with some of the local um, landlords that we know are interested in making the city um, a better place and then lastly um, looking to see what we might do with i was talking earlier about the street sweeping because it comes through in the middle of the night and we've had a few residents that have complained about not having off-street off parking. And I guess I didn't realize how much, not how many houses didn't have parking, um, but people being ticketed and, you know, clearly we want our streets to be clean, but is there a way to maybe look to do that during the day when people are at work so that there's less opportunity for cars to be on the street, which means people will be happier because apparently you can't park your car on the subway. Um, a couple of residents have found out. So just looking to see if maybe there's something we can do to take a look at um, when that is, because not every resident is near a city park a, uh, parking lot where they can easily and readily move their cars. Okay. Well, I, I would highly encourage you to, as long as I've been on the council, that kind of rears its head. Um, and I would encourage you to sit down with our new DPW director and, and see what, what, what his thoughts are um, on that arrangement. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it is an inconvenience. Um, and as our driveway's kind of been uh, busy this, this past summer and blocked up, um, don't you just have to kind of park around the corner? Like, and it, I mean, yeah, it's an inconvenience. You have to remember. Um, and there have been plenty of times where I've run out at 2 a.m. because I wake up and I hear the street sweeper and I get in the car and I, right, I just drive it three houses down around the block. Um, so, you know, there's got to be something that can be done. There's got to be some, uh, and I, I feel bad for residents when they don't have driveways. That's all it is. I've got two in my ward and that's what I hear, right? It's like they want special dispensation. Um, but maybe there is a better way. Maybe there's a better timing issue of, right that maybe uh, we haven't really considered that but um, I would encourage you to have that conversation with uh, Director Thompson. I know the laws have changed. I always thought on street, street sweeper nights you're allowed to park in the subways but you have to have your vehicle removed off the subway by 7 or 8 in the morning. I don't know if that. So that is what one of my residents thought but got ticketed on there because um, apparently a neighbor called and I was on a street sweeper and you're a lot on subways. And so if you did get a ticket and it's re but the car was removed at the proper time, I would ask the mayor to look into that because he can void that ticket. So it was a parking ticket that you needed to void. Did you say call the mayor's office? <laughs> <laughs> all the mayor's office if you got a parking ticket. Okay, young man. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, Mr. Clerk, will you please read the public comment statement? The public comment portion of the Common Council regular meeting is established to provide members of the community with the opportunity to publicly state their views, voice their concerns, or to provide input pertaining to any issue affecting city government. Additionally, the mayor, Common Council members, and city department heads encourage any person with questions to contact them at their office. Okay, um, at this time I will invite any member of the public to approach the podium, uh, state your name and address for the record, and you will have five minutes. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> no, no one wants to talk about what your confirmation student that was. <laughs> at this time I will call public comment close.
On the finance and bills, None. resolutions. Resolution number 91-22, PL number 95-22. Resolution authorizing the transfer of funds from capital fund number 213, American Rescue Plan Act, to newly created capital fund number 216, Warfax Park, Splash Park. Okay, this was, um, this, this is the second installment, uh, if you recall, uh, the $500,000 uh, that came from the, uh, the ARPA, the American Rescue Plan uh, monies. Um, we received them in two sums, one last year and then one this past July. Um, and so the idea was to split up those payments, um, this is that second payment, to um, make a total of $500,000 in the capital fund for the uh, War Vets Splash Park upgrades. Uh, and I want to thank Older Woman McCall uh, for pointing out something that, yep, has come up uh, in the past. Uh, the ARPA funds have a list of criteria, what you can spend and what you can't spend it on. And you can't spend it on budget or operating items. Um, so things that you have to pay every single year. Um, One-time upgrade that will help in, in, uh, to increase tourism to your community. Um, that's, that's certainly one thing that uh, you can spend it on. So, um, the, I want to just let you guys know, uh, myself um, and Director Thompson uh, met with uh, Bill from Beyond, because he's uh, at uh, NICOM uh, this week, but we just had a, a meeting with Clark Patterson Lee, our project manager on the project with Vortex. Um, all, all the parts and pieces have been ordered. Uh, the delivery date of that, we're going to have to store them because the elevations and, and most of the equipment that we see will be installed in the springtime. Um, but we're getting pretty close to starting the demolition. Is that uh, what your understanding is there, Director Thompson? Yes, I'm just uh, waiting on the final plan so we can do our final plan review, but they're looking at delivery for the remaining items to start coming. And so uh, another thing that uh, was brought to our attention um, was now between, um, I think, our, our group here, uh, DPW, our engineering team, project managers, and uh, now the county health department have to work together to go over all of the um, requirements. Um, uh, water parks are mandated and regulated by New York State, and they have been since 2000. Seven, I think, um, it requires ultraviolet uh, purification and a, a series of purification and um, disinfecting mechanisms. And so, I believe we're going to be uh, maybe working with our old friend Bob Rank over there at the County Health Department to go over those uh, those features. They got to sign off on everything. So, just giving you guys an update. Uh, any comments or questions on this? Alder woman with. Yeah, I was curious. Unallocated ARPA funds. Uh, Thirty-six thousand dollars, I believe. For now, last year is done, so that's just what we have left this year. Um, last year, I think we had nine thousand dollars left from last year. Yeah, okay. that sounds about right. So a little over a hundred. Yeah, but I can give you the right number tomorrow. Okay. That's not that's my head right now. Okay. I'm, I was just curious. You you said thirty-six thousand, right? From this year. And 9,000 from last year. Okay. Okay, thanks. But I'm not too positive if that's the correct number. Could you follow up on that? No, no. Should us an email on that? No, I will. Yeah, I was just curious. Thank you, Mr. Rockford. Anyone else? All right, seeing no other questions, I'll go ahead and sponsor Greg. Second. Second. Second by Alderman Gonzalez. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Witt? Yes. Alderman Gonzalez? Yes. Alderman Yes. Alderman Gonzalez? Yes. Alderman McCall? Yes. Alderman Robinson? Yes. Alderman Anastasia? Yes. And President Crawford? Yes. Passes unanimously. Resolution number 92-22, PL number 94-22, 
by Alder Woman McCall, seconded by Alderman Witt. Resolution authorizing the transfer of funds from general fund contingency to line item 5110.412. Okay, talked about this a little bit ago. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Witt? Yes. Alderman Panis? Yes. Alderman Gonzalez? Yes. Alderman Woman McCall? Yes. Alderman Robinson? Yes. Alderman Anastasia? Yes. And President Crawford? Yes. Passes unanimously. Resolution number 93-22, PL number 95-22, by sorry, authorizing the installation of a streetlight on National Grid Pole number 6-1 on West Fall Road. Okay, we talked about this um, last week. And Alderman Anastasia brought this to our attention. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, Mr. Anastasia, would you like to sponsor? I'd like to sponsor. Okay. Do a second, please? Okay. Second by Alderman Witt. I'd also, <coughs> due to my absence last week, uh, due to the death of my dad, I'd just like to thank uh, Chairman Robinson for allowing Kelly Carlson to address the committee and for you guys uh, approving that last week. Yeah. Thanks for having me come in, Dave. Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Witt? Yes. Alderman Panis? Yes. Alderman Gonzalez? Yes. Alderman McCall? Yes. Alderman Robinson? Yes. Alderman Anastasia? Yes. And President Crawford? Yes. Passes unanimously. Resolution number 94 22, PL number 96 22. Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Panis. Resolution to create capital fund for the Cornice Park project. Okay, any final comments? Seeing none, we'll quickly call the roll. Alderman Witt? Yes. Alderman Panis? Yes. Alderman Gonzalez? Yes. Alderman McCall? Yes. Alderman Robinson? Yes. Alderman Anastasia? Yes. President Crawford? Yes. Resolution passes unanimously. Resolution number 95-22, PL number 97-22, by Alderman Anastasia, seconded by Alderman Gonzalez, to authorize the mayor to sign and submit an application to Cattaraugus County for ARPA funds in the amount of $400,000 for lighting upgrades and installation at Hornets Park. Okay, so I just want to make a clarification. Um, so that, uh, those sponsors were for the previous grant application, uh, resolute, not grant application, previous resolution uh, that was submitted, uh, what, a month or two ago, uh, that w when there was $350,000 based on estimates. Um, so now would be updated, uh, the county would request that we have an updated resolution for them. Uh, this goes off of the sponsors from earlier today. Which were? Witt and Panis. Yes. Okay. Witt and Panis. Witt and Panis. For both of them? Uh, 9422 should be Panis and McCall. Oh. So 9422, for the record, was Panis and McCall. No. 92. 9422 was McCall and Witt. 96 and 22 was Panis and McCall. 97 22 was Witt and Panis. Uh, see, I'm getting, you know, are, we, are you looking at PLs or are we looking at resolution numbers? <clears throat> looking at PLs from the previous agenda. Re yeah, resolution section uh, the description where it mentions the $350 or yeah, 350k <laughs> for the lighting upgrades yes yes all right uh, can I um, I'll make a motion to suspend the rules you make a second 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 by Alderman Robinson all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion carried 
Okay, so then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just make a motion to amend uh, resolution 95-22, PL 97-22, to read Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Panis, and then uh, on the very last paragraph, uh, ARPA funds in the amount of 400,000 rather than 300,000. Um, anything else in this? Are those the correct numbers? The 180, 125, and 94? Yes. Those are, those are correct? Yes. And those add up to 400,000? Exactly, yes. Okay. All right. I made that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by all in the call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That is good to go there. All right. Any uh, final comments, questions? <laughs> yes, I, I got the final number for you. Um, and, uh, um, so last year, uh, about we had 9,195 left. And from this year, it's 139,074. Well, they're 139. Well, that could have been you now. <laughs> 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 We're in the middle of doing something here, Lance, and you're just like... <laughs> Getting it done. Get the job done, right? Man! Yeah. 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 Because you know what, as soon as I hit this, the yeah, it's out the door. So that's, yeah. it's like, you know what? Okay, so we're good to go on this resolution. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, we'll quickly call it. Uh, yeah, call it <coughs> Alderman Witt? Yes. Alderman Panis? Yes. Alderman Witt? Yes. yes. Alderman McCall? Yes. Alderman Robinson? Yes. Alderman Anastasia? Yes. And President Crawford? Yes. Resolution passes unanimously. Resolution number 96-22, PL number 101-22, to authorize the installation of deer crossing signs on Constitution Avenue and Genesee Street. Okay, uh, this one we brought up last week. Um, any comments or questions? John, I'm just going to reiterate that uh, you know, I drove the road and confirmed the 35 miles per hour, and I'm not for putting up signs. If you clip a deer doing 35, then you weren't paying attention. So that's my take. Down with the signs. Down with the signs for me. Deer can't even read signs anyways, right? Right. Well, I, I will say after we left last week to Alderman Gonzalez, going down West Henley, a deer practically decided to tag me and down Constitution. And I like to think I was paying attention. I'm like, I just think there's more deer. I don't, I don't know either that or I have deer attracted on there. Right? Yeah, it is. Maybe we should revisit the problem rather than put up signs. We tried that in the team building. They would follow the signs. You guys made the city walk up. All the deers are just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, though, to all of Panis' point, if you're, if you're going the speed limit and you're not on your phone, not saying you were. Of course not. That would be wrong. Right. Uh, and you hit a deer, that's your fault, yeah. right? If there's some kind of uh, yeah. thing that helps us sleep at night because we put up a sign, I'm fine, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's a sign. I will say that... If we get to putting up signs everywhere we've ever seen a deer, they lose their effectiveness. Um, yeah. We don't want to empower the deer to think they could just cross anywhere. <laughs> I agree. I think we should sponsor something like that. No, no. In fact, I'm stringently against the, the deer culling notion either, too. I will fight that even as a citizen. You're against that? Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> what are we going to do? That's a separate conversation. Separate conversation. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If we're gonna do that, then we might as well start to get the wood chipper off of the cast too. So <laughs> that's the door. It's like Kevin Doherty's here. I know. Hey, all right. Wild card. 15 meters to go. So do we have a sponsor for this? All right. Is this sponsor? Do we have a second? Hey, catch up, man. That was 
No, Pam's meeting sponsor. Yeah, exactly. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, resolution 96-22. This might be the front page of the paper tomorrow. This might be right down to. I don't know. Uh, 4-3 margin. I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to swing. Controversies. Rock, paper, scissors. All right. Any other comments, questions? No. On the deer's crossing sign, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Witt. Yes. Alderman Panis. No. Alderman Gonzalez. No. Alderman McCall. No. Oh. Alderman Robinson. <laughs> For the sake of safety, yes. I just wait. Alderman Anastasia. Yes. And I've never had a deciding vote like this. President Crawford. <laughs> the pressure right now. I did that for you. For you. The pressure's on, Jeff. It's like the voice. No. Okay. I'll let my constituents know. <laughs> Dear can't read signs. Get off your phones. That's right. The resolution yeah, okay. fails. <laughs> I, I agree. What does the what do they do? Do they just say? We're gonna, we're, I'm gonna we're gonna have to contact EPW to, to find out if, if there are actual studies that like do they do those signs prevent major accidents putting up a deer crossing sign? I think uh, the more signs you put up, people become blind. Well, and I personally I slow down at night when I see a deer sign because I know they're coming. Well, so it's it's funny that we bring this up because I think day after the council last week, there was a radio, the guys on the radio were talking about a study, and 57% of people didn't know how to recognize a construction sign, like construction ahead. Uh, and what know, it meant. Yeah. In all seriousness, I wouldn't say I hit a deer. A deer hit me on Constitution like 15, 20 years ago. Would a sign have made a difference? Absolutely not. And I'm going to say the same thing. Both those deer that I saw, because I was thinking, oh, God, oh, of course, right? I see them. But I don't, like, I know those are residential streets. I know what the speed limit was. I wasn't going crazy. And I don't know if that would have made a difference for me. And so you swayed me. You can't cross this. Okay, I'm going to move to go. Order. Can I go second? It's a second. Second by Alderman Robinson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Breaker.